Hello traders, welcome to the Wednesday trade recap and forecast. So I did take some trades in the last week uh, on EU, AU and New Zealand Japanese yen. So I will go over those right now. So starting with the euro and the US dollar. Let's see what kind of trades I took here. Well, per price action has been pretty range bound right here. And then we got a nice impulse down, some nice strong momentum. We got four consecutive or three consecutive red candles going down. Absolutely nice momentum. And I'm definitely looking to sell after this sort of price action. So then we did form a flag formation right here. So this was the first low, first high, second low, second high. And the red candle is the entry candle. It did go down, so it did go into profit for... I think 1% because I risked 1% on the trade. It was running in 1% profit. And then I did manage to reduce my risk for, for break even. So I moved my stops according to my uh, trailing stop loss rule up to break even. And then I got taken out on the break even level for zero or maybe a, a small loss because of the fees. So this was a break even trade, but a very good setup. And as you can see, it did go down in the end. So it's just that it took us out before dropping down. It can happen, of course, but I was very happy to position myself right here on this flag formation. This was a textbook, textbook trade. Nothing wrong with it. Strong momentum, small wick, absolutely no shift, no momentum shift in the in the flag formation. So perfect, perfect, perfect setup. Then we broke the low, retraced, broke, retraced, broke, retraced, retraced. So just nothing really continued. Momentum did not really continue here. And right now we did get a bit of a momentum to the upside. But again, breaking, leaving wicks, small candles, struggling to go up, wick on the top. So it's not looking good currently. I don't like the current price action and especially with this big red candle clear momentum shift to go down so no one is winning the buyers are not winning the sellers are not winning i'm expecting a large range in this area and what i'm waiting for i'm waiting for large momentum to the upside or large momentum to the downside so very simple currently this pair is looking very very range bound ej so there was a couple of opportunities uh so let me just quickly run through them so wednesday was here that's when i did my recap last week there was an opportunity to get in on a reversal setup to buy right here i didn't take this one because bar price action was more range bound than descending so the descending was definitely not well defined and I did not want to risk it at this point. So this to me, I just did not see any sort of a high probability setup, but it would have been a winning trade or it would have went up and then took me out for a loss if I was in the trade. Uh, then we had this flag formation. So another flag formation, first high, first low, second high, second low. The blue candle is the entry candle after the flag forms. I didn't take this one as well because I saw a clear momentum shift in the two candles. Also, stop loss, 12 pip stop loss, super small. When the stop loss is super small, the volatility is very high and I don't want to risk to be taken out uh, with such a small stop loss. So yeah, this momentum shift and the small stop loss definitely was enough to keep me out of this losing trade. Broke the low retrace, broke the low retrace, broke the low retrace again. Right now, I do expect this price to reverse to the upside. It is Wednesday. So Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, usually we get some nice trends, nice setups, nice big winners. So we are descending after a descending channel. I expect the price to go up. I am expecting to see something like this. And then I would be looking to buy either on a flag formation or on a break and a re test so let's see that's the highest probability setup that i can see right now would i take a reversal like this i would if it's clean so if there is no momentum shift if there is no wick on the top if if it looks very good if there is strong momentum going up i would take a break and retest setup like that price can also go down 
then I would be looking to sell, but that is not as high probability as if the price goes up. So best bet is if the price goes up, I will be looking to buy. That's my best scenario. Then we have the Aussie and the US dollar. So on this pair, I did take a trade as well. So let's see where we had last Wednesday. Okay, this was Wednesday. And then we got this really good impulse to the upside. This was a really, really high probability. I really like the setup, especially since we were coming down in this descending manner, breaking the lows and retracing. Then we get some strong momentum to the upside. So we reverse up and then we get the flag formation, very clean flag formation, no warning signs for me personally. So first high, first low, second high, second low, blue candle is the entry candle. I don't see any momentum shift here. This week was not a concern because it did not print a bearish, uh, a huge bearish body. This week was just weakness to the downside for me personally and a, a sign that the buyers were winning. So everything was good about this formation. This was a 10 out of 10 no brainer setup. Descending, I'm expecting the price to go up. We get the signature move up, three consecutive big blue candles really clean bomb formation or flag formation no momentum shift and it did go up it did move into two percent profit but then unfortunately it took me out for a one percent loss i did not get to reduce my risk so this was a full one percent loss trade and this just proves that even the best setups even the textbook setups can still lose my win rate is around 30 percent something like that so most trades I take will be losers. Even the best of the best uh, of the setups will, of course, can, of course, lose. So then this current price action is just very, very range bound to me personally. There was a sort of a potential to get in on a reversal sell. But to me, per price action, I was seeing more of a range than a clear ascending structure. So this is more range bound to me. And this move down is not really that big. So that did not interest me. Uh, and yeah, I'm just expecting a larger range right here. I'm not seeing any sort of a clean high probability formation. One thing also, this is a news candle. We can clearly identify a news candle by a huge wick and this big body. So I don't look at news, but after news candles, I do know what happens in most cases. And if we get if we start ranging after a news candle, it usually ranges for a really long time and any uh, impulse usually fails. So after you get a clear new scandal and a large range, any sort of a impulse usually fakes out and just continues ranging around. So I'm looking for more momentum, looking for more price action, looking for the price to move further away give me a nice established trend and then I would be looking to buy or give me a nice established downtrend and then I would be looking to sell. So that's about it for AU. This pair is not on my watch list. We can move on. AJ, no setups that I can think of. So this was Wednesday. This was the last recap and then we moved up. Descended, moved up. Aggressive retrace, broke the high, retrace, broke the low. New scandal again and you can see after a new scandal and we start uh, so new scandal we start ranging first move usually fails so this move has failed you can see by the signature momentum going up so the buyers are stepping in again and that's what happens in most cases after a new scandal when does a new scandal continue well usually it continues if there is just small range or no range so if you get an immediate momentum like this then it usually continues but if you get this sort of a range usually that sort of price action does fail because there is hesitation actually I don't know the reason but that's just what happens on a large enough sample size was I looking to sell right here no too far away and also the bar price action I was expecting a large range breaking the lows retracing not really seeing a strong established momentum and as I just explained the methodology behind the new scandal so this was not a good setup for me personally yeah right now seeing sort of a v reversal I'm just leaving this one alone 
I'm expecting more range bond price action. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for nice strong momentum up to move away from the current price and then to buy or strong momentum down to, to move away from this price and then to sell. So same as on the Aussie and the US dollar and AJ is not on my watch list. Then we have the pound. The pound has been moving really, really nicely. So we did have a really nice descending channel as you can see here, breaking the lows and retracing all the way to the downside. I really like this price action and I was definitely looking for an opportunity to get in on a buy setup. And there actually was one or two opportunities to get in. So first I saw this bit of momentum. Again, prior price action, most recent price action was ranging right here, but the overall picture, the bigger picture is clear breaking of the lows and struggling. Definitely expecting the price to uh, reverse in the opposite direction. So then we got these two big blue candles, one candle pullback, we continue up. At this point, I was not looking for a break and a retest because I just did not want to get tagged in on one candle, to be honest. And it was Tuesday. Mondays and Tuesdays predominantly range bound days, so not really high probability for me to, to take any sort of potential momentum shifts. Uh, then we moved up further uh, even more. And then we got an opportunity to get in on the retest of this level right here, which I didn't take because I was starting to see momentum shift to the downside. I was starting to see a bit of a V reversal right here, to be honest. And again, it was Tuesday or Wednesday early morning. So it did not really fit my plan, to be honest. This just was not looking like a clean setup. And then we got a flag formation as well. So maybe some people got in on the flag formation. For me personally, I was not really seeing what I wanted to see. Bit of a slowdown here, breaking, leaving wicks, and then this momentum shifting down. To me, this looked more like a V than momentum going to the upside. So yeah, I did not want to take this, these formations. They were just not clean enough. Again, also most recent price action was not perfect. This was pretty range bound. Uh, and yeah, so just when I weighed all of the characteristics, all of the advantages and disadvantages, I did decide to stay out of this setup. But it would have been a nice winner. So it's currently running in some nice profits if you were in this trade. Let's say 16 pip or 20 pip stop loss, you would be running at around 1.7% profit. So yeah, possibly a good setup if it fits your plan my personal plan did not it did not fit my personal plan currently i'm seeing the price struggling to go up breaking the highs leaving wicks retracing breaking the highs again leaving wicks retracing so you can just see struggling to go to the upside breaking and leaving wicks again this is ascending i am expecting the price to go down if it does i will be looking for a sell setup or if momentum does continue, I will look for a buy setup, but I need to see momentum kick back in as we had here. So I need to see these sort of big impulsive blue candles. This current price action is looking very, very ascending. That's it on the pound. The pound is not on my watch list, to be honest. So let's move on to the New Zealand and the Japanese yen. So this one was a bit tricky. Um, we had this sort of a formation. We had sort of a V reversal and then sort of a range push up, one candle pullback and we continue. But yeah, this was not a good trade. I did take it initially. So I did put my order on and I did get tagged, but then I noticed it's not a good trade. It doesn't really fit my plan. And I did manage to get out for a break even on this one so yeah this time i did get lucky it was kind of a early in the morning it was six or seven in the morning my time so yeah i tend to take crap trades early in the morning took it uh, realized the mistake went through my checklist went through my trade plan and then i did manage to get out for a break even on this particular trade it's a bad trade it's not a good trade why is it bad well because 
this is very very range bound this momentum is not that big when you compare these candles they're not really that big so they're not really impulsive and again it just looks very very range bound so yeah not a good setup and i got lucky on that one most recent price action very very range bound as well stuck in this sideways flat range ascending into a descending structure so yeah i'm just looking for more I'm looking for a large impulse up or a large impulse to a downside. This pair is not on my watch list. Only pair I am looking at currently is potentially the Euro and the Japanese Yen. I do expect this pair to reverse to the upside. It is breaking the lows and retracing and I would be looking for a buy setup if it does reverse. So that's it. That's it for the forecast. I did take free trades. Again, some of them were no brainers, high probability and J1 was crap trade but i did manage to get out for break even um and yeah just let's follow the plan let's keep looking at the setups let's uh, see what the markets will bring us usually august is a good month so we will see what happens in august this is the last week of july let's see what this week brings as well but we know the beginning and the end of the month for me personally can be a bit slower so the meat of the the meat of the month which is from let's say the 8th to around the 23rd 24th of the month is usually where i get most winning setups so that's it for this trade recap uh, hopefully this helped you guys and hope hopefully you learned something today i know i learned a lot from the nj trade it was a very fomo impulsive trade so definitely i need to watch uh, at my psychology because I should not have taken this trade. So that's it for the trade recap. See you guys in the next one next week on Wednesday.